What's going on everybody, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the all new Amazon Fire TV Stick 4K Max. This is the second generation, the 2023 version. And on paper, it looks like we've got some really nice upgrades here, like Wi-Fi 6E. And one of my favorites, we've got 16 gigabytes of storage. And I know it might sound weird to say I'm really glad we've got 16 here, but the older ones only had eight and it kind of did limit what you had to install. You could always use USB storage or OTG storage, but with this, having that extra storage, I think it's going to be one of the biggest differences between the first generation and the second. The design has changed a bit. As you can see, we've got those round corners, but we're basically the same size. This also comes with the Alexa voice remote, a 5 volt, 1 amp power supply, and our USB power cable. Now, uh, one thing they didn't change here on the new model is actually the USB port. I was really expecting this to have USB Type-C, but they're still using micro USB, which is a bit odd. And I really wish they would have swapped this over because that would have made it a lot easier to add a USB hub to this. Now, when it comes to the internal specs of this new model, we've got an upgraded CPU. This is the MediaTek MT8696T. Quad core up to two gigahertz and the original 4K Max stick where the first generation only ran at 1.8 gigahertz. We've also got a nice little upgrade on the GPU. It's now using the PowerVR GE9215 at 850 megahertz. We still have only two gigabytes of RAM, but we get 16 gigabytes of internal storage as opposed to eight. They've also upgraded the networking here to Wi-Fi 6E. This supports HDR10, HDR10+, HLG, and Dolby Vision. And this is running Fire OS 8, which is based on Android 11. So a lot of people with smart TVs already have a lot of this stuff built in, but one thing that I wanted to check out was some cloud gaming and emulation on this device. We're also going to just take a look at the overall interface performance and some 4K video playback. But the price on this right now is $59.99 for the new 2023 Fire Stick 4K Max. If you're interested in learning a little more, I'll leave a link to Amazon in the description. But let's go ahead and jump right into it. All right, so here it is. Setup is actually really simple. If you've ever messed around with any of these Fire devices, then you shouldn't have any issues whatsoever. We are on Fire OS 8, which is based on Android 11, and the overall user experience does feel a bit snappier than the last generation. First and foremost, the Fire Stick is really designed for video playback, and it does that really well. 720, 1080, and with the 4K Max, 4K 60 is not an issue. We will be testing some out from a uh, YouTube. And we are working with Widevine Level 1, so all of our favorite streaming apps will be able to do HD content. From the Find section, we've got our App Store, free movies, TV shows, and games. Checking out the App Store, lots of stuff that we can download, but you know, when it comes to native games, there's not going to be a lot that this can run at full speed. They don't really put a bunch of 3D games in here, mainly because we are working with a low-powered CPU. But luckily, from the game section, there's actually a lot of cloud gaming that we can get done with this, and they're really pushing Amazon Luna. This does have Wi-Fi 6E built in, and paired up with the Luna controller, it's actually a pretty decent experience, and we'll talk about that more in a second. But the first thing I want to check out is just some 4K video playback from YouTube, just to see what this thing can do. And I'm just going to go with this video demo. It's 4K 60fps HDR. And from here, we can actually go to the settings, just show you that we are at 4K, and we'll turn stats for nerds on so we can see if this thing's dropping a bunch of frames or not. And this is connected to a 4K 60 monitor. We've also got HDR enabled. Stats for nerds on screen right now. You can see our frames right here zero drop and I've actually went through and tested a few different videos I haven't dropped any frames with 4k 60 and that's one of the best things about these fire sticks they're designed from the ground up for video playback so they're not going to be dropping a bunch of frames or skipping around with 4k content so yeah as a media playback device this works really well we've got access to all of the streaming apps we could ask for but I personally like to test out some emulation and gaming on these fire sticks and really, in order to do that, you're going to need some type of controller. The Xbox controller works really well over Bluetooth, but for the Luna Cloud Gaming Service, they do have the Luna controller, and this is a bit different because this actually has Cloud Connect. The controller itself connects to Wi-Fi. You can also use it over Bluetooth. So while we're Cloud Gaming, it's actually going to send all of our inputs over Wi-Fi directly to the server instead of sending them over Bluetooth to the Fire Stick, and then the Fire Stick needs to send them to the server. 
This way it actually alleviates a lot of the input latency that we see with other cloud services. And this isn't the first time we've seen this for a cloud gaming service. Actually, Google Stadia also did this with the Stadia controller. You would connect over Wi-Fi and it would send those inputs directly to the server. We've got a few extra settings here. So if we go to our video section, we can set it up for 1080p or 720. And I believe they have a higher tier subscription service that'll allow you to do 4K with some games. But you know, I'm right here at 1080 and I still think it looks really good. And paired up with the Luna controller, it's actually a pretty decent experience. There's a lot less latency than there is with GeForce Now or Xbox Cloud Gaming. In my opinion, some of the hardest games to play using a cloud service due to input latency are racing games. But here we have WRC Generations, and uh, it's really not that bad. I can actually get through these corners pretty easily. I also wanted to show off some Devil May Cry 5, and keep in mind we are at 1080p, 60fps, streaming this from the cloud. Now, of course, we could go to the App Store and download a few games like Crossy Road and test them out, but they're going to work great on the new Fire Stick 4K Max. One thing that I wanted to take a look at was some emulation. RetroArch is available on the Amazon App Store, but when you go there and search like PSP for PPSSPP, you're just not going to find it. You will have to sideload that. In this video, I will be testing out some PSP emulation and N64, but we're going to start out light here with some Game Boy Advance and just see how it handles it. So far, haven't run into any issues here with GBA emulation. Got the FPS up in the top right hand corner. And by the way, I'm not using the Luna controller right now. You can if you want to, but I already had the Xbox controller connected to this over Bluetooth and it just pairs right up with RetroArch really well. Checking out some PS1 emulation, still using RetroArch, and I'm using the PCSX Rearm Core. You could go with Duck Station if you wanted to. I believe it's called Swan Station now, but, uh, you know, I actually do like using this one. Works great on these Fire Sticks, and even on the older versions of the Amazon Fire Sticks, we could emulate PS1 at full speed. But there were a few emulators that really struggled, like N64 and PSP. Here we have some N64 emulation, and for this I'm not using RetroArch. I actually swapped over to a standalone emulator known as Mupen64 Plus FZ. This is one I had to sideload. And I originally tried the Mupen Core in RetroArch, but it was really laggy. So I do prefer using the standalone version on these lower end SOCs. And this isn't bad at all. Much better performance than the other Fire Sticks we've tested. And I'd say this is definitely playable. And the final thing I wanted to test here was some PSP emulation using the standalone version of PPSSPP. We do have access to OpenGL and Vulkan on this new Fire Stick, but I would recommend using the Vulkan backend. You're just going to get much better performance. We're going to start out here with Tekken Dark Resurrection. Heading over to Settings, we're actually going to take this up to 2x resolution instead of 1x. Using the Vulkan backend. And it's running this game at full speed, and we were even able to take this up to 2x. So when it comes to the easier to emulate PSP games, this should actually do a pretty good job. Some of them you may need to take down to 1x, but we know there are really hard to emulate PSP games, like the God of War series. And unfortunately, with this one, even at 1x, we're not getting full speed. This has kind of been the case with these fire sticks. We've never really been able to emulate this at full speed without frame skip. And even with frame skip turned to 1, you're still not going to get good performance. We should actually be running at 30 FPS right now with frame skip set to 1. It's a bit unfortunate. I was really hoping we could run this at full speed on the new Fire Stick 4K Max. Okay, so first impressions. I personally think that the interface is a bit snappier. It could be due to the faster CPU or just the updated operating system. 4K video playback is amazing on this, but, you know, that's what it was really made for. Native Android games or, you know, App Store games like Crossy Road are going to run great. You go with the lower-end games. None of the higher-end 3D Android games are going to run well on this. When it comes to cloud gaming, we've got a little advantage over the first generation Fire Stick 4K Max because we've got Wi-Fi 6E instead of Wi-Fi 6. And it's also really nice that they upgraded the storage here from 8 to 16. But is it worth upgrading from the first generation to the second? Personally, I don't think it is. Now, the only way that I would really upgrade is if you're using an older Amazon Fire Stick. 
even the older 4K non-Max, this would be a nice little upgrade. But if you're already rocking the first generation 4K Max, I would stick with what you have until they come out with something a bit more powerful. It's just not worth the upgrade in my opinion. I really wish we saw a significant increase in performance when it comes to emulation, especially PSP. That would be really nice to be able to run God of War at full speed. But we're getting the same kind of performance as the first generation, which kind of tells me that it's not much of an upgrade over that one. But in the end, it's always going to be up to you. So if you're still interested in picking this up, I will leave some links to Amazon in the description. And if there's anything else you want to see running on this new Fire Stick, just let me know in the comments below. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. And like always, Thanks for watching.